So let's go into our Wuji stance. Feet about shoulder width apart. Knees slightly bent, relaxed. Bring your hips forward to so the coccyx for the tailbone, points towards the floor. Let the head feel like it's rising up, elongating the spine. Tuck the chin in a little bit. Let the shoulders drop down and come forward a bit, rounding the shoulders a little bit, bringing the arms around in front. Standing nice and tall and straight, breathing in and out through the nose. As you breathe in, draw that breath through the nostrils all the way down and let the abdomen pull that breath by expanding outward, deep into the body. We pause. And then we let the abdomen contract back towards the spine, pushing the breath all the way up and out. And we pause again. And just focus on that breath. Notice the qualities of the breath. Try to slow it down. Elongating each inhalation and exhalation. Feel your feet flat on the ground, sinking deep into the earth. Feel that connection to the center of the earth. becoming one with the earth. Just feel that energetic connection. Let's go into the first of the four thumps today. So we're gonna tap, not too strongly, on the bone just below the eye, the orbit of the eye, feeling those vibrations. As the vibrations move through the skull, to the spine, down the spine into the hips. Continuing downward through the legs, into the feet and into the ground. And the four thumbs breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. Couple more. And just uh, put your hands down and just see if you could sense that energy running through your body, that sense of being attached to the earth. The first of the four thumbs is for grounding. The second one really isn't a thump. So you, you can thump it. I prefer to massage it. It's the kidney 27 points. So if you come to the collarbone, go almost to the end of the collarbone and then drop down about an inch or so, there's a natural depression. If you stick your fingers in there, it's gonna be sore. If it's not sore, you probably need to move around a little bit and figure out where it is. What I will do, 
I'll use one hand, and this is about the right spacing. And I'll just get in there and I'll move my fingers till I find those two sensitive spots. And then I'll massage it either with one hand or with two hands, doesn't matter. Just really get in there. This is for the energy system. Gets the energy flowing, opens up blockages, removes stagnation, gets the energies flowing in the proper direction. And then again, just put your hands down. Be care, become aware of the energy moving through your body. The third of the four thumbs, the thymus point. So as you go down the sternum, you find again a little depression about a third of the way down. You can massage that if you like. I just prefer to stay with the thumps on this one and just with an open fist. Hear the vibrations and open fist causes and feel those vibrations moving through your chest. And then spreading out through the rib cage and through the rest of your body. Thymus point is for the immune system. So the old idea of the four thumps is to try and hit four major body systems. We've done grounding, the energetic, the immune, and let's just put our hands down again, connect to the earth. Feel the energies surging through your body. And then the last of the body systems, the lymph system. We're going to tap, or in this case, I prefer to massage the neurolymphatic points. They're all along the bra line here. Just get in, get your fingers in there. You can tap if you like, but this one especially, I like to get in and massage because when I find there's a little point that's a little sensitive, I'll just stay there for a moment, massage a little bit longer. It's right along the bottom of the bra line. Just stick your fingers in and work your way across. And once you've kind of worked out the tension there, start from the sternum, go down about a 45 degree angle, staying on the ribs. And again, when you find a spot that's sensitive or tight, stay there a little bit longer, massage that out. And then I add one more point to the four thumps. Four Thumps was developed by Donna Eden, who's the premier person in energy medicine. Um, but I add one more spot to her routine. If you go to the bottom of your armpit and drop down about an inch, you'll find a point that's really sensitive. If it's not sore, you probably aren't there. Now, if you with all of these, if you do these for every day. For about five days, you'll notice it's no longer sore. It'll be harder to find. And that's fine. That means it's opened up the pathway. The energy's flowing. But then you do want to continue the practice. You don't want to stop and go, oh, everything's fixed. Because it can close down pretty quickly. You want to keep all these systems open. So we get in and we just massage here. Not so hard that it hurts. Just enough 
So you go, well, okay, I'm on that spot. Feels like I need to rub it out. Let's switch to the opposite side. Find the bottom of your armpit, go down about an inch. And get in there and massage. Good, again, just put the arms down, connect to the earth. And just feel the energy moving through the body. <clears throat> just start bouncing a bit. So from the knees, just let everything else relax and just go up and down and bounce. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Opening up those points of stagnation. Energy flow. I like to do a visualization with this, picturing silver golden light from above, entering the top of the head, and then the shaking acting like a pile driver, pushing it down through the torso, the arms, the legs, all the way down deep into the ground. And then once it works its way all the way into the ground, you start over. You just do that a few times, clearing any darkness, any energetic stagnation or blockages, filling the body with a beautiful, warm, loving light. Relax the head and neck. If you wanna do this more free form, you can kind of do it side to side or just kind of shake around, whatever feels good. The more you can get your body to relax and just shake, the more it will release that energetic flow that we're looking for. Just a little bit more. And just slow it down gradually. And now really feel the energy surging through your body. And just look inward. Try to notice where you might have still some tension, maybe a little bit of pain, maybe energetic blockages or stagnation. Just identify them and move on. Mind directs the chi. So just by identifying these points, we facilitate healing. Go back to the Wuji stance or slightly wider if you prefer so that you're nice and stable. And let's do the, a movement from the Zizhen Jing, which I find great for any kind of arthritis in the hands, the wrists. So we're gonna start with our arms in front of us with the fingers pointed down, thumbs pointing straight out, everything separated. We're gonna tense and spread our fingers apart and our thumbs apart as hard as we can as we breathe in, as we lift them. And then pause, relax, breathe out. Then we breathe in, we do what's called baby chicken. We're really pushing down with the knuckles. So the fingers point down, pushing down with the knuckles. 
pulling up on the wrists. Relax and come in. Pushing now with the heels of the hands, pulling the fingers back. Push out. Breathe in, relax. Breathe out. Now extend your fingers out to the horizon, stretching them apart as much as you can. Breathe out and all the way down. So when you go out, try not to lock the elbows, but otherwise you're really tensing the hands through all of this. This is one of the situations in Qigong where I want you to tense and then relax. So let's do that again. So we're gonna breathe in and tense. Pause, breathe out, bring it into the body and relax. Breathe in, push those fingers down. Pause, breathe out and relax. Breathe in. Pushing with the heels of the hands, pulling the fingers back. Breathe out, relax. Breathe in, fingers to the horizon. Breathe out and relax. One more time, breathe in. Good. Karate chop the air. So you're going straight forward. And you're gonna do it really vigorously. So you can feel like your fingers are getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And slow it down, relax. Good. Give your palms a nice rub. Put your fingertips together and push outward, lift the elbows, forming like a teepee. Collapse the teepee, bring the elbows in. Breathe out, bring it up. Sorry, breathe out as you go down. Breathe in as you come up. Breathe out as you go down. Last one. Good. Intertwine the fingers, put the forearms together and turn figure eights from the wrists. Forearms together helps keep it so that you're working the wrists, not working the arms. Let's reverse. Separate the hands, hit just below the pinkies on the sides of the hands. and come down to the wrists. Good. 
Turn them over, base of the thumbs. One wrist over the other, we're gonna hit at the wrists, opening the inner and outer gates. And switch. Come up to the elbow, put your hand right over the elbow and just wrap it completely around. A little friction, stimulating the six meridians in the arm. Now the opposite side. right around the elbow, not the forearm. So we're coming to the elbow and then underneath. Good, as long as you're here, let's stimulate the large intestine 11 point, also known as the antibiotic point. You can make a bird's beak or you can just take your fingers, put it on around the um, arm, the elbow, you're going to see there's a crease here and then there's a bone here right in between. You can get put the thumb in there or you can pack it either way. We're just going to stimulate that point. Great for the immune system. Opposite side. Mr. Rooster spreads its wings. So bring the hands together so the fingers were brought to the thumb, bird's beak. We're gonna put the bird's beak just inside the shoulder crease. And we're just gonna turn big circles using the elbows to circle, keeping those fingers in the same place. Notice as you come down, the fingers really dig in a bit, stimulating lung one and lung two points. and reverse. On this one, especially as you go back, open the chest. Now we're gonna get a little more in the back. We're gonna do one arm at a time. So we're gonna bring it around, up and around. So bring that elbow up and around. Try to lift it and turn a big circle. And reverse. Good. Just staying here for a moment using both hands. Let's just tap that area. Some people like to cross over. Personally, I, I think just I mean, either one-handed or two-handed, I like to do it this way, but whatever works for you. Good. Let's do one from the eight brocade. Wise Owl looks backwards. 
So all we're gonna do is we're gonna roll, have our hands pointing towards the floor roughly. As we look over a shoulder, it doesn't matter which one, you're gonna pull your thumbs up and around. So they're basically down like this. They're gonna rotate the entire arm, not make sure to try not to do it in the wrist. It's the entire arm is going to rotate. So as I look back, my entire arm rotates back. And then I come back to the center. Then I go to the opposite side. Now, when you come back to the center, you can actually make your thumb go a little bit further around the opposite way. Whatever feels good. Getting the full motion here out of the arms. Breathe in as you look back, pause, breathe out as you come around the opposite direction to the center. Last one each side. Go ahead, shake it out. Alternate hip circles. Try not to use the arms, it's all, I'm sorry, not hips, shoulder circles. Nice big circles with the shoulders. And reverse. Now do them together. Really pull the shoulders up to the ears, forward and then down. And reverse. Good. Take the fingers of your right hand, find the crease in the shoulder just behind the shoulder, the top of the shoulder here. Follow that crease down to as close to the shoulder as it, you can find. Kind of dig the fingers in there, lift the elbow, take your left hand, pull that elbow down as that forces those fingers into that crease. Breathe in and you breathe out as you relax. Breathe in as you go up in half an inch or so and dig in again. Breathe out, go up another half an inch. Breathe out, dig in. One more time, then we're gonna go back down. Just slowly work your way down, getting those muscles to relax. Last one. Good, and switch. So find that groove first, work your way down towards the shoulder till you're kind of at the bottom of that groove. Lift the elbow up, stick the fingers in, and then pull down, pulling the fingers in even more. Just work your way slowly up towards the neck and into the bottom of the neck. And then when you get as far as you feel comfortable into the neck, work your way back down.
last one. Good, and just let the arms hang. Let's do a little silk reeling. The idea here is we're gonna get the ball to turn in the socket of the shoulder without using muscles at all. So we go to a wide stance stepping forward. We let the arm hang as we lean forward onto that front leg. We then lean back, bring the shoulder up or we turn slightly bringing the shoulder up, then bring it forward and just shift your weight from front to back, letting that arm slowly rotate without using any muscles at all. One more time, we'll go backwards, let's go. Don't use your shoulder to lift, let it all just hang. So the shoulder moves back and forth all on its own. And let's switch. So a nice wide bow stance, leaning forward. We're gonna come up and around. Letting the arm just hang. One more time and then we reverse. And slow it down. Bring your feet back to the Wuji stance. Step out wider. With your left hand, shift your weight coming across the body. Let it rise, shift your weight so it comes back the opposite side, then let it fall. So notice I'm not moving my arm at all from side to side, only up and down very easily. And then try to just get it nice and flow. So you can turn this nice circle here, Zen circles. As your fingers move along the bottom, see if you can feel the resistance, like your fingers are rubbing the surface of water. And then you just float up, float down. We're gonna come across the body and then we're going to reverse. So we come up, we go down. We come across the body, then we reverse and go the opposite direction. One more time, as it comes across the body, you're gonna let the other hand come out. So the other hand comes out as you go across the body, it now continues to go.
One more time, then you're gonna go across the body and you're going to reverse. So you come up, around, across the body and then switch direction. Try to use the shifting of your weight, the shifting from side to side to move the arm side to side rather than moving the arm itself side to side. So the arm essentially just lifts up and down. One more time and just come back to the center. My both hands just come out. And just stay with that wide stance. Get in touch with the energy of the earth through your palms. And you're gonna turn so that your right foot points out slightly. You're gonna bend the left foot so that you drop down. As you drop down, your right, your right hand palm out follows your leg. Your left hand comes up in a crane's beak. Then we switch. Version of snake creeps down. One more each side. Come back to center. Bring the stance in a little bit. As you breathe in, let your hands expand outward. See if you can start to form an energy ball between your palms. As you breathe in, you're meeting with some resistance. And as you breathe out, as they move back to the starting point, there's some resistance. So really start to feel that energy ball between your palms. Good, bring that ball so your left hand is on top. Your right hand is gonna be like throwing a Frisbee, go to a wider stance, sorry. It's gonna be like throwing a Frisbee. And so you're gonna shift your weight to that side as you throw the Frisbee. Your left hand drops down. Then we circle around back to the beginning and shift our weight back to the left. Shift our weight to the right as we throw, come back. Feeling that energy ball each time, bringing it out, parting the horse's mane. One more time, throw the Frisbee. Now bring the hand across and form the chi ball on the opposite side and throw it now to your left. One more time, throw the ball, 
bring it around. So your left hand is on top, still holding that chi ball. You're gonna to turn to the left. The left elbow comes up as that right hand pushes through. Then form that chi ball again, roll it over. So now the right hand's on top. That elbow comes up as the hand pushes through. Fair Maiden works the shuttle. One more time, bring it up, push it through and grab onto that chi ball and bring it around in front of you again. So the left hand is on top. Let's go right into cloud hands. So we're gonna turn our palms towards the body, upper palm facing and connecting to the middle dantian, the heart, the lower hand connecting to the lower dantian at the abdomen. Nice rounded with the arms, not too close, not too far out. Nice comfortable distance. With your left hand on top, you're just going to turn to the left. Then the hands float up and down, reconnect and then drift to the opposite side. Let them float and reconnect. Imagine almost like you've got strings or lights in your palms. And so we kind of sever them and then we reconnect and then we move to the side. The hands stay right in front of the Dantians through the entire movement. You can picture red light coming out of the upper palm, silver light on the lower palm. And as you're drifting across, focus on the upper palm, look at that upper palm. Then as they drift apart, look to the horizon and then focus back on that upper palm. The slower you can go, the more you can feel the energy. Last time, left hand on top, come back to the center, turn them so they face each other. Bring your stance in just a little bit, so you're about shoulder width apart. The left hand, the palm is gonna rotate till it's palm up and it's gonna above your head where the right hand rotates palm down and push the two apart. Then turns to the pinkies face, the body, the back of the hands cross, and now we switch. Breathing in as they cross, breathing out as they separate. Making sure to get the pauses between each. Gathering the energy from heaven and earth, bringing fresh energy into the body. Then in that pause, we're gathering energy that no longer serves us and sending it out to be recycled. Then in that pause, we gather fresh energy again.
connecting heaven and earth. Let's add an, another element to this. As the arm comes up, look the opposite direction. Come back to center and then look to the side. It's just one of those variations in connecting heaven and earth that I really like part of the eight brocade sequence. One more time. Let both hands come down in front of you. Bring your hands up, interlace the fingers Bring them up, rotating in front of your face, pushing up and slightly behind you. So you can feel that on the stretch while you look through the fingertips. Then look forward, keeping the hands back in that position, then sweep down. So we breathe in. We pause as we look forward. We hold our breath. And then we exhale down. Pause, breathe in. Breathe out. Hold up the heavens, also from the eight brocade. Last one. As your arms come down, bring your feet fairly close together. Gather the energy as you breathe in, come up onto your toes, bring that energy up into the chest. And then feet go flat as you push down. So we breathe in as we go up. Breathe out as we go down. Last one, breathe in and breathe out. Good. Keeping the feet close together, right hand, palm up below the lower Dantian, left hand scoops up the energy, thumb and first finger separate. And as you breathe out, the thumb facing the center line of the body slowly works its way down. You get to the bottom, you switch. Breathing in. And breathing out. So as you start to breathe out, gather the energy, bring it down through the top of the head, and then down through the central line. Try to feel the energy coming out of that gap between the thumb and the first finger called the tiger's mouth. So if you close your eyes, you can sense where that hand is by that energy coming out of the tiger's mouth. Now on this next one, we're gonna stop at the upper Dantian. And just hold it there for a moment. Picture golden light coming out of the tiger's mouth, going into that upper Dantian, filling that entire area 
with this warm, loving, golden light as it dispels any energy blockages or stagnation, any negative thoughts, removing any darkness, setting that whole area ablaze with the gold light. And then slowly drop it down to the middle Dantian. Red light coming out of the tiger's mouth. Filling that middle Dantian, the heart, the whole chest cavity with that warm, loving light. As it too removes darkness, energetic stagnation or blockages. Dispelling negative emotions. Filling that area with a warm, loving red light, setting the whole chest cavity aglow with energy. We come down to the lower Dantian, we switch, we go through the process again. Red light, I'm sorry, gold light, filling the head, expanding outward beyond the physical body. Dropping down to the middle Dantian, red light. Expanding outward from the physical body, intermingling with the gold light from above. Drop down to the lower Dantian, one palm over the other, doesn't matter which. Either holding at the wrist or interlacing at the thumbs. Picture white light coming in, filling the whole abdomen with the warm, loving light as it too dispels darkness, energetic stagnation and blockages. Removing any fears. Until it too begins to expand beyond the physical body, encompassing first the middle Dantian's energy, then the upper Dantian energy, until the body is aglow with energy. Just allow yourself to float within that energy. Become aware of what it feels like to be safe, to be healthy, to be at peace. Take a deep breath and gather those feelings and take them with you for the rest of the day. Thank you.